Hello guys, this is Arvind here from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to the session on DRM interview questions. So the whole purpose of making such videos is suppose you have an interview in few hours, and then you have to quickly brush up your fundamentals or you know the concepts related to any particular topic. So in such cases, our videos might prove helpful to you. So that is the whole reason of making such videos. So in this session, we are going to cover the interview questions related to DRM. So let us just start with first question. So the first question here is what are the different types of versions and statuses that are available in DRM? So version information is available from the browse task on the navigation bar. Each version has the following characteristics such as version name, version description, type and status. If you talk about the type here, there are basically three types. The first one is normal. Normal is a version that can be edited and its status can be modified. Next type that you have is baseline, which is nothing but a copy of the normal version at the time it was saved. This version type has a status of expired. And the third type here is as of. So which is nothing but a historical view of normal version based on a time period or transaction ID. And if you talk about the status here, there are four status that are available in DRM. The first one is working. In this status, the users can edit the versions. The next state is submitted. Only users who are the owner of a version or with the user role of data manager can edit the versions with this status. The next status that you have is finalized. No one can edit the versions with this status. And the fourth status is expired. And no one can edit the versions with status expired. So these were the different versions and statuses with respect to DRM. The next question here is what is the version backup and restore process in DRM? So versions of data stored within Oracle data relationship management application may be temporarily archived to a file system or migrated to another application using a backup and restore procedure. One or more versions may be selected and included in a backup file which is written to an external connection defined by an administrator. The backup file may later be restored to the same or different application. During the restore process, data relationship management identifies whether any incompatibilities exist between the properties stored in the file and the property definitions to which they will be loaded in the target application. Next, restore from file warning transactions are logged for property incompatibilities which may be encountered during the restore processes. So let's just move on to the next question. What is a hierarchy group? A hierarchy can only be associated with a single group for each hierarchy group property. The core hierarchy group property may be used for default grouping purposes. Additional hierarchy group properties may be used to handle alternate grouping requirements. When browsing hierarchies, you can use the group by drop down list to select a different hierarchy group property which can be used for grouping. So the next question here is what is a shared node? Shared nodes are multiple instances of a node within the same hierarchy. The global properties for shared nodes automatically reference the values of the primary node and can only be changed at the primary node. Local properties are not shared with the primary node and can be specific to each shared node. So I hope you guys are understanding whatever we are trying to discuss here. So now let us just move on to the next question. The next question is how to enable shared nodes. To use shared nodes in an application, you must enable the shared node maintenance enabled system preference. For any hierarchy in which you want to share the nodes, you must enable the enable shared nodes hierarchy property. These settings are disabled by default. The next question here is what is a property? Properties are attributes of a version, hierarchy or node. Core properties manage the attributes that are used for standard product functionality. Custom properties can be added by the application administrator to manage additional attributes that are necessary to support subscribing systems and business processes. So the next question here is, what is an action script? Action scripts allows you to process a bulk set of incremental changes in an automated fashion. Each record within the script represents a separate action to be performed and is processed individually from other actions. Actions of different types can be grouped together in the same script. Action scripts are particularly useful when you need to perform the same set of actions for multiple versions, hierarchies or nodes. You can leave the action script page while a script is running and return to the page later to view the results. You can also view the results of the action script. So the next question here is, 
what is the script parameter for delete often. So the script parameters that are available for delete often are delete often version and node. The next question here is what is the purpose of import? So using Oracle data relationship management, you can import data extracted from external system, relational database tables and views are manually created by users using a multi-section text file format. Imports are always performed on new empty versions created as a part of the import process. The next question here is what is a blender? So Oracle DRM enables you to combine elements of two different versions into the same version. With blenders, you can perform actions such as process adds, moves or deletes to an existing hierarchy. Next, you can process activations and promotions. You can also act upon any combination of hierarchies and you can create new hierarchies. Next, you can map top nodes from a source hierarchy to a nodes in a target hierarchy. The next question is, what are the roles that are required to customize the blender? So blenders can be customized and saved by users with the roles such as application administrator, data manager and data creator. So the next question is, what is an export in DRM and how many types of exports are available in DRM? So Oracle data relationship management allows you to export information in a variety of formats to meet the different needs of each system and user. Multiple exports can be grouped and run together using books. From the export task on the home page, you can create open and manage exports and books. You can open multiple exports in separate tabs, but only one export can be focused on at a time. So there are basically 11 types of exports available in DRM. The next question here is, why do we use books? So saved exports can be grouped and run together in export books. This enables a set of commonly used exports to be executed with one action rather than individually. Books can also be used to combine the output of multiple exports into a single output file. So the next question here is why at all do we need to use audit? So Oracle DRM records a history of different activities performed within an application for audit purposes. The transaction history logs all operations performed including changes to version data, application metadata and user security. The job history tracks the completion of long running processes such as imports, blenders and exports. The next question is what are the different types of options that command line provides? So as you can see on the screen, there are various options that command line provides such as action script, backup version to file, blend, close version, delete version, export, import, multiple, open version, refresh version, request, restore version from file. So these are the various types of options that are provided by command line. Okay. So the next question is, what are the outputs and result codes that are available in DRM? So if your result code is zero, it means successful or normal termination. One means that the error is unknown. Two implies batch operation completed, but generated warnings. Three means batch operations did not complete due to error. 100 means that error communicating to or return from the Oracle DRM server. 200 means error occurred during initialization of batch client. 210 implies an invalid parameter value was passed. 220 signifies the invalid URL and 230 means invalid username or password. So now the next question is what are the query types available in DRM? So this question is very simple and the straightforward answer is there are two types of query available in DRM. The first one being private and the next one is saved. The next question is what will happen if we delete a hierarchy? So when you delete a hierarchy, the nodes within the hierarchy are not deleted. If the nodes do not exist in any other hierarchy within the version, then they become orphans. The next question is what is an orphan node? An orphan node is defined as a node that exists in a version but is not assigned to a hierarchy within the version. Orphans may exist pending a cleanup to completely removing them or they may be awaiting reassignment to hierarchies in the version. The next question is why do we use node types? So node types enable hierarchy nodes to be viewed and managed differently based on their relationships and attribution. So nodes of a specific node type share the same properties, validations and lift. So the next question is how do we work with external connections? Application administrators can define and configure common connections to external file systems databases and web services. Imports, exports and books can share file and database connections 
to minimize maintenance of connectivity information. Database and web service connections can be configured with external operations to look up data in an external system or commit data changes to an external system. The next question is, how do we use node access groups in DRM? So Oracle DRM controls granular user access to hierarchy nodes and their properties using node access groups. You can assign users to groups that are granted access to specific nodes in a subset of hierarchies within the DRM version. So the next question is, what are default OAGs available in DRM? Can we create custom OAGs? So the default OAGs available in DRM are user, standard, and system. And these are available by default. Yes, we can create customized OAGs from 11.1.2.3.5 versions. So the next question is, what is a validation in DRM? So validations enable business rules to be enforced on versions, hierarchies, nodes, and properties. Validations can be run either real-time or batched or in both the modes. Real-time validations are run at the time of modification and they prevent changes from being saved if the action would violate the rules that are being enforced. Next, batch validations can explicitly run before or after edits are made to identify data conditions that are invalid and that need to be addressed. And the last question here is, what is the usage of property categories in DRM? So property categories enable the grouping of Oracle DRM properties and are used to control the assignment of security privileges to sets of properties. Core properties available by default are only located in a single property category. Custom properties created by application administrators can be associated with multiple property categories. So these were some of the questions that are most frequently asked in DRM interviews. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If you have any queries related to this session, then you can write them in the comments box below. And my team is here to help you with all your doubts and queries. Thank you so much.